Hello and welcome to Showcase, Charity World's flagship arts and culture program, coming to you from our studios in Istanbul. On today's show, we'll dive into the dispute between British and Ethiopian officials over hundreds of artifacts looted during the Battle of Magdala. And we take a look back at the cutting-edge films of yesterday that have stood the test of time. But first... Bringing you the smooth sounds of jazz from San Luis in Senegal. From the streets of Dakar to the studios of Istanbul, we'll mark International Jazz Day by celebrating its smooth sounds heard around the world. Creativity, diversity, richness. They're just a few words to define a music genre founded by African-American communities in the late 19th century. We're talking about jazz. And it just so happens that every year at this time, people around the globe stage a myriad of events to celebrate International Jazz Day. I'm a boogeyman, baby. Para nosotros, el jazz. For us, jazz is not just beautiful music. For us, jazz is an intercultural dialogue. It's also a message for human dignity, for human rights. Jazz has a particular quality that makes it um, uh, particularly suited for the creativity that, was, that is within every human being. And that's the fact that it's an improvised music. But we human beings improvise all the time when we converse, you know, just with dialogue. When playing jazz is, is like a, a dialogue between the musicians. Jazz music, described by many as a form of intercultural dialogue, is bringing thousands of people around the world together on International Jazz Day. And this includes musician Baha Yetkin, who joins us here in our studio. He plays the oud, a classical stringed instrument which archaeologists believe dates back more than 4,000 years to the Mesopotamian city of Ur. Thank you so much for joining me today, Thank Baha. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, now, jazz music was originated uh, among the African-American communities in New Orleans back in the 1920s. Yeah. Uh, and it was a form of musical expression of those people. Taking that into account, how important is it to have a day dedicated to jazz? Actually, uh, in my opinion, it's not exactly jazz day. All music genres day is important for that kind of music and also word music. Uh, because that music types uh, created by someone who who feels uh, and expression they, their feels feelings mm -hmm. I think and uh, that especially jazz that music uh, very good uh, way to express your feelings and emotions yes, the music emotions. of soul yeah exactly, exactly. all right so. The oud is a classical instrument, uh, but many musicians use it to create music uh, of different genres. Yeah. Um, how can one create jazz music with using a classical instrument? Jazz came from, basically, came from North Africa. And North African melodies come from Mesopotamia. 
in mm. history. So it influences each other. And they use uh, microtunnels when they play oud. Well, I'd love to hear something uh, yeah, that has sure. a jazz twist sure. to it. Yeah, I have composition li like chords. I use some different chords. And I'm going to play this uh, as an as example. Go for it. Thank you Absolutely so amazing. Thank you. Uh, now, Baha, tell me how you integrate Turkish music uh, mm -hmm. with jazz. Yeah, as I told, uh, jazz came from uh, Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. and Mesopotamia's culture and Anatolian culture very clo close each other. Uh, about Ottoman time and Arabic music and uh, Ottoman music style uh, influence each other. And under Ottoman Empire, uh, they collected very good artists architectures or uh, some other uh, uh, good people, good uh, talented mm -hmm. people. Uh, so we have some same melodies, same melodic structures, same uh, chord structures. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at your our uh, Sufi music, especially the 13th and 14th century, 15th century, uh, you can see there is a classical harmony and also some jazz harmony in 80s, uh, 18th century, 19th century. Well, can you show me if it's possible yeah, how sure. some they've influenced? For example, standard Turkish classical music melody. Instead of this music, something like this and also Wow. Um, so you're going to have a concert tonight, uh, yes. hopefully, with Petros Klampanis who plays the contrabass. Yeah. Now, tell me how the music of both the oud and the contrabass can harmonize. Actually, uh, we have good uh, examples in the world. Uh, Avishai Kohen, another double bass player, a contrabass player, uh, he used uh, oud and he listened. And I, I like when I listen first, uh, I like his style because uh, both fret this instrument. Uh, fret, is, there is uh, metal things on guitar. Uh, we call it fret. This one is fretless. Yeah. There's no fret. So you can use 
the uh, microtonal interval was both instrument. And it would be uh, such an interesting uh, night tonight because there is no drum, no keyboards, no another uh, instrument. So that just double bass and oud. It be, would be uh, experimental uh, night tonight. It's very interesting. Now, um, jazz is all about improvising. Yep. Um, is that a challenge to do sometimes, or is that what makes jazz unique? If you play standards, uh, it's really challenging. But if you play fusion, or we can say world music now, uh, it's not about challenge, uh, because uh, it's your own feeling when you play uh, improvisation, when you do improvisation. Mm -hmm. uh, so. It's your opinion, your feelings, your emotions. Nobody can say anything about it. Just mm -hmm. if you use that tone, tonality, mm -hmm. uh, that chords, that's all. Yeah, so uh, it is what makes it yeah. uh, unique indeed. Yes. Now, uh, Baha, I really want to see and get a little taste of what you will be playing tonight. So if you don't mind, can you play something yeah, sure. Uh, sure. from your upcoming show? talent. Thank you Unfortunately, that's all the time we have left, but thank you so much for coming on our Welcome. show today. Welcome. Thank you very much for your invitation. Well, as we heard earlier, International Jazz Day was created to both honor the unique musical style and also to celebrate the genre's global reach. Jazz may have originated in the United States, but its sounds have traveled as far away as Senegal, which is currently hosting the week-long Saint Louis Jazz Festival. Appearing on stage in the capital, Dakar, will be some of the most talented jazz musicians from around the world. One of those performers is renowned pianist Shahin Novrasli. We'll be bringing you an exclusive interview with him in a moment. But first, let's hear what our reporter Miranda Addy has to say about the festival itself. Technicians are setting up for the main stage of the San Luis Jazz Festival, which takes place every year here in Senegal. While the town is picturesquely situated on the water, it should perhaps be better known as a town that runs on music. This is the 26th edition of the San Luis Jazz Festival, and it's now widely recognized as the premier jazz event across Africa. It also provides a real boost to the town's tourism from the construction, the cuisine, and of course, the accommodation for the predominantly French-speaking tourists and jazz lovers who spend around a week here in Senegal. And while there are usually around 30 new artists performing, it's also widely recognized as attracting international jazz talent from everyone from Herbie Hancock to Marcus Miller. This year, the festival is dedicated to the memory of Didier Lockwood, a jazz musician who recently passed away. There will be tributes, photos, and of course, musical performances dedicated to his memory. Other performers include Shahin Novrazli, Nicholas Fomer, and doing it for the girls, the American powerhouse, Rhoda Scott. As Miranda just mentioned, Shahin Novrazli is one of the headliners at this year's festival in Dakar. 
The two got a chance to sit down and speak about how Novrosli creates his unique form of jazz fusion, the reason he returned to San Luis, and why he thinks jazz is a metaphor for life. This is my second time here in San Luis Jazz Festival and the uh, first time was last, last year. I'm very happy to be back because, you know, I'm very excited for the people in Senegal. It's very interesting that all Senegal, Senegalian people, you know, a lot of jazz musicians here, a lot of jazz musicians, a lot of jazz lovers, jazz fans. So it's very interesting and a very great honor to be here the second time and to play and uh, to perform, uh, to show my music to the audience. What inspires your music? Originally, I'm from Azerbaijan, and uh, we have, of course, a uh, national music style. It's called Mugam, and, uh, and I was studying classical, classical piano play, classical pianist like uh, Mozart, Beethoven, and uh, after all these all these genres, you know, I, I was thinking about to, I was to start jazz because you know to play jazz because I was in love with jazz I was in love with improvisation all the time and uh, and it, it it gives you the way to to create to write to mix the all the styles of music so in jazz I started to create my own composition my own vision in the, in the music where I create uh, the music the mixing the mugam classical and jazz these three kind of styles in the music you have quite a big kind of team that you work with as well. Tell us a little bit more about your band. The, the bass player from Cuba, he's um, Felipe Cabrera, a great bass player. And uh, uh, drums player, uh, Jocelyn Hazard. You know, they, they're very great musicians and uh, they back me up, like, they feel me, feel my music, feel what I do. Sometimes, sometimes I can go somewhere in the music that I, we didn't prepare and they just follow me and uh, this is really great. It's really great. What do you think is so special about this style of music? Just love, just freedom, you know, I just want, and this is the, this is uh, what it is now, but I, want, I just want the people to love more jazz, to more listen, and to improvise, you know, the, not just music, just improvise the life. <laughs> just just follow the, follow life through the jazz, you know. And talking about, you know, jazz being love, uh, you had a special relationship with uh, Didier Lockwood, who, you know, passed away recently. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're honouring him here at San Luis? Yeah, he was a great, great musician, great friend and a great violin player. And uh, my, my album, The Manation, we recorded it two years ago. And he was a featuring guest and uh, he played two of my compositions. He shared a studio with us and uh, it was a great time. We dedicated this concert to great Didier. And you've talked about your previous album, but I know that you've actually got a new album coming out in October. What can fans expect? The idea comes from legendary and great Ahmed Jamal. And uh, this idea was from, come from him that uh, to record uh, American Songbook. And um, we did very good recording and, and um, it's produced personally by Ahmed Jamal. I hope that in October, and all the world will listen to this album, the Cold Shaheen Place American Songbook Plus. <laughs> Still to come on Showcase, what's black and white and seen all over. Take all those Miss America pictures off face, Please tell me, please tell me the truth. Now, Gilly, if you ever love me, please now tell me. Now look here, my good You friend. shut up, Burns. Turner Classic Movies gives fans lots to talk about with a film festival celebrating celluloid's greatest. Under glass and in dispute, the stolen treasures that are causing an international row between Britain and Ethiopia. Spring is when movie festivals kick it into high gear and the cinephiles start raving about upcoming releases. But there's one springtime festival in particular that stands out 
And instead of looking forward, it looks back on classic movies that have now become part of our collective film consciousness and that set the standard for many that followed. Here's our look at the very unique TCM Classic Film Festival. The TCM Classic Film Festival is all about reacquainting audiences with the visionary and cutting edge films of yesterday that have stood the test of time. Take all those Miss America pictures off, please, sir. Among this year's lineup is His Girl Friday by vanguard filmmaker Howard Hawks. According to historians, this black and white feature modernized and set the standard for the romantic comedy genre. AIP, the movie company that was a major influence on today's independent film circuit, also received a tip of the hat. Its popular Edgar Allan Poe adaptations were considered the successful franchise of the 1960s. And one of the best of the series, The Raven, was screened, not in digital, but 35mm format. The Raven will take you careening through the darkest of dangers. Step three, you go back to work on the books. Only list of backers, one for the government, one for... But it was the 50th anniversary special screening of the producers that stole the limelight. Step four, we open on Broadway. Directed by comedian Mel Brooks, this motion picture lampooned the entertainment industry long before it became fashionable. On the red carpet, the 91-year-old Brooks remembered his movie's late star and longtime friend, Gene Wilder. Does their scheme work? Does this girl know? Well, he was in all my movies, you know. Every time I could, you know, I, I made a movie, the first guy I thought of was Gene Wilder, you know. He could do anything. He was a terrific, I mean, really a terrific, serious actor, as well as a born comedian. <laughs> The organizers also pleased fans by making room for groundbreaking animations. The Pink Panther shorts, produced at the height of the transition period in animation, paved the way for modern wacky comedy. And at this year's festival, they proved that cartoons from the 20th century can still pull a crowd. The looting of cultural artifacts has gone on for millennia. And for nearly as long, many countries have been fighting to have their treasures returned. One of them is Ethiopia. For a long time now, the East African country has asked various institutions in the United Kingdom to give back its stolen goods. And now one British museum is willing to do its part, but with a twist. The Victoria and Albert Museum in London has put its collection on display to mark the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Magdala. It took place in 1868 during the British invasion of Abyssinia, when troops looted hundreds of artefacts and relics. The valuables now in British custody include hundreds of manuscripts, royal gold and even remains of the defeated Emperor's son. The v &A is one of the several museums that hold Magdala artefacts and has offered to return them, but not for good. Well, it would be exciting if the items held at the v &A could be part of a long-term loan with a cultural institution in Ethiopia. These items have never been on uh, a long-term loan to Ethiopia. But as we look to the future, I think what we're interested in are partnerships around conservation, interpretation, heritage management, and these need to be supported by government assistance. But officials in Ethiopia, who have tried to reclaim the stolen artefacts for years, are against the idea of borrowing items that belong to them. We have a lot of written documents that show they carried out a planned and organized looting in Magdala. We also know that these treasures are in the British Museum. It's clearly known where these treasures came from, to whom they belong. Our main question has never been to have them on loan. Ethiopia's position has always been the restoration of those illegally looted treasures. We uh, presented our request in 2007. I'm waiting for it. We haven't received any response so far. We are trying to push it forward again. 
and it seems Ethiopia won't be getting back the artifacts anytime soon, as UK legislation holds that unless there's an act of parliament, what goes inside a British museum cannot come out. And with that, we've come to the end of another episode here on Showcase. Make sure to join us next time as we take a look at award-winning director Wes Anderson's best movies to date and explore the offerings at this year's Art Beijing. Until then, you can check out more of our coverage on our YouTube channel. I'm Afnan Han. Bye for now.